to everyone. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. So, I am Dr. Rajini Samuel, Professor of Biochemistry. I am going to discuss about uh, my research topic, Unlocking the Cardiac Death Theory and Endovernicular Triangle Model, a paradigm shift or a major transition in ACG interpretation. And this was done during my undergraduate study, MBBS. So, it was published before in the year 2012. And later on, I published three research articles. Recently, only it is gaining research. Now, I am a biochemistry professor. So specific learning objectives to discuss in detail the vector concepts involved in electrocardiogram to formulate and apply the cardiac type theory in ECG interpretation to explain the endo and nuclear triangle model for the application of novel approach in ECG interpretation. So you see ECG is one of the oldest and the most important diagnostic tool. It has often immense clinical value. But the problem is the interpretation is an arduous task, especially for the well, junior staffs. So the commonly, the pattern memorization method is applied. So ECG phobia develops in some of the junior doctors, often seeking expert opinions. So Enthoven used vector concept even before a century, but he never published a detailed description of the same. So equilateral triangle model with the heart at the center of the homogeneous volume spherical conductor was initially proposed by Enthoven, but he never published a complete detailed description of the same. Attempts by other researchers were not, was not successful, and basic principles of vector concepts are not frequently taught and applied in ECG interpretation. So, introduction I will just will highlight the points. So, bi atrial and biventricular chambers. Atrium is activated longitudinally, and the ventricular chamber is activated transversely. So, TP segment, PR segment, and SC segment are the isoelectric portions. P wave is atrial depolarization. QRS is the ventricular depolarization and T, a T wave is the ventricular repolarization. The direction of the repolarization wave is opposite to depolarization wave, but in normal ECG, T wave and QRS are similarly directed because the last cells to depolarize in the verticals are the first to repolarize. So ECG leads, bipolar limb leads, lead one, one two, three, and unipolar AVR, AVL, AVF recorded through the changing Goldberger center terminal and unipolar precordial V1 to V6 is recorded through the stable Winsor's center terminal and the electrode placed on the right leg is a reference electrode and the, and the leads recorded through GCT is augmented 3 by 2 or 50 percent higher and the correction factor 1.4 is used to com compare the difference in, in the resistance between bipolar and unipolar limb leads. So this is the XX, XX reference system. All these relations have already exist. The relation between the unipolar and the bipolar limb leads and lead 1 plus lead 3 is what lead to is the Enthoven equation. So angular interpretation can be done using the voltage recorded in AVF and lead 1. So tan alpha is equal to AVF divided by lead 1. The correction factor 1.154 is used for the difference and strength resistance between the bipolar and unipolar leads. So I will go to the vector concepts. So vector has both magnitude and direction. Scalar has only magnitude and no direction. So position vector is given as the vector that indicates either the position or the location of any given point with reference to the reference point. So position vectors represent the location of a moving point. As the point moves, the position vector changes in magnitude and direction. Displacement vector is a change in position vector. So it is defined as the vector joining its initial position to its final position. And length is the shortest distance between them. So these are the already well-known concepts in mathematics. So in the right angle triangle, sine theta is equal to Sin theta is equal to opposite side divided by hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is the side 90 degree opposite is hypotenuse. Sin theta is opposite side by hypotenuse. Cos theta is adjacent side by, by hypotenuse. And tan theta is opposite side by adjacent side. So already vector is equal to vectors magnitude into unit vector. For example, OL vector is a vector is equal to OL into OL unit vector. So vector is both magnitude direction. Scalar is only magnitude and no direction. So these are the displacement and velocity are vectors, distance, speed, and time are scalar quantities. So unit vector is a quant uh, vector quant quantity whose magnitude is 1 and has direction only. Unit vector has no unit and it is a dimensionless quantity. And one more concept in mathematics, scalar or dot product between two vectors. If two vectors are multiplied and the product is a scalar quantity, then it is called scalar or dot product. So it is equal to the product of the magnitude of the two vectors and the cosine of the smallest angle between them. So in this right angle triangle, OH vector is a hot vector and OL is a lead vector. So voltage recorded will be 
it follows the dot product between these two vectors. So dot product OH vector into OL vector is equal to OH, OH denotes the magnitude of heart vector and OL denotes the magnitude of lead vector in the cosine of the angle between them. Lead vector denotes the orientation of the electrode, and, but this also has magnitude of strength, but it can be compared relatively with other lead vectors. So the magnitude of the bipolar limits and unipolar limits can be compared using the correction factor. Similarly, the unipolar limits and unipolar pre-coded limitations can be compared using the augmentation factor 3 by 2. For example, the OL vector is equal, to, is equal to OL into OL unit vector. This OL unit vector has no unit and denotes only the direction. But this OL vector has, is a vector unit measured in meter. Suppose if you substitute one, if you take the magnitude as a one, then we'll be getting lead vector is a unit vector multiplied by magnitude of one. And so it is measured in meter. So lead vector denotes the orientation of the electrode and it is measured in meter. So projection of hot vector and lead vector so this is the right angle triangle. If you drop the perpendicular from the tip of the hot vector and it reaches the point B, the OV is the voltage recorded in that particular lead. OV is equal to OH cos alpha. So if you substitute, we will be getting the final result H dot L is equal to OH cos alpha. So H dot L is equal to cos alpha. If the voltage recorded in, in a particular lead is a result of dot product between cardiac vector and lead vector. So cardiac vector theory proposed by myself the H dot L is equal to OH cos alpha. So this theory states that voltage is recorded particularly is the result of dot product between cardiac vector, which is measured in which is electrical field vector measured in volt per meter and lead vector measured in meter. Since voltage is a scalar quantity, voltage recorded in a particular lead depends on both the magnitude and direction of the cardiac vector, only on the direction of the lead vector. The strength of the leads, bipolar, unipolar, and unipolar pre-coded leads can be compared using the correction factors and the augmentation factors respectively. So now I'm going to discuss about the application of this cardiac vector theory. So I've mentioned that in the table column, the cost values. So as the angle increases, the cost value decreases. So voltage recorded in a particular lead will be positive, the both the vectors are in the same direction. And voltage will be negative, the both the vectors are in opposite direction because cost value is negative. And maximum if it is parallel because cost zero is one and equiphasing or null deflection if it is perpendicular because cos 90 is zero. And if you look at the cost angles and the values, the as the angle increases, the cost value decreases. So voltage will be increasing as the angle it decreases and voltage will be decreasing as the angle increases. So voltage and, and the angle are inversely related. So lead vector denotes the orientation electrode position and velocity of the cardiac vector is related with time in the x-axis. And magnitude of the cardiac vector is related to the voltage in the y-axis. So application of the hot lead vector relationship. So high voltage in a particular lead is either due to magnitude of the vector is high or the angle between the two vectors decreases. Low voltage, the magnitude of the vector is low or the angle between the two vectors increases. In the prolonged ECG intervals or wave duration, the cardiac vector velocity is decreased or the distance traveled by the vector is increased. In the short and ECG interval or wave duration, the cardiac vector velocity is increased or the distance traveled by the vector is shortened. The example unipolar EVR, it used to be negative because the heart vector is moving away from the electrode, the cost value is negative. And normally the lead to rhythm is a rhythm strip because the normal resultant heart vector is usually parallel to lead to. And the magnitude vector is zero, flat line, if no ECG deflections are seen. So reversal of the leads, if the direction of the limb lead vector is um, op opposite, in opposite direction, then the voltage will be wrongly recorded. So same cardiac vector, I put the H dot L equal OH as alpha, I am going to apply for all the clinical applications. So direction of the limb lead is opposite, so voltage will be opposite. And similarly, the pre-coded limb leads are not kept in proper position, not in direct position, the magnitude and direction of the heart vector will be different, and the voltage recorded will be false value. And technical errors are common, but under-reported under problem. So technical errors can hinder the proper ECG interpretation. So sometimes this may mimic pathologies lead to, to misdiagnosis. So displacement vectors, so P wave is the atrial depolarization. So the right enlargement and the left end enlargement can be identified using the changes in these position vectors. And the delta wave is a slurred upstroke in the QRS due to pre excitation of ventricles due to an extra path that connects the atria to the ventricles. So displacement vector of the QRS complex. 
it begins in the left subendocardial region of the lower third of the interventricular septum. The septal vector, the resultant septal vector is directed from left to right. So it is clearly shown in the diagram, the blue color. The resultant vector, the larger vector from left to right. Following the say, septum, the free walls of the ventricles are activated. So this here the resultant vector direction is from right to left. The resultant septal vector is from left to right, but the free walls of the both the ventricles direction is from right to left. So we can apply the same concepts for formation of these waves in the precordial leads. So R is complex. The initial R is due to the you know, in the right oriented leads due to the small resultant resultant septal vector followed by the activation of the free walls. And in the left oriented leads Q are complex. The small Q, the negative Q is due to the septal resultant septal vector followed by the R complex due to the activation of the free walls. So infarction, the QRS vector, will, the QRS denotes the de ventricular depolarization. So in the myocardial infarction, the tissue is necrosed. So it is electrically not, so it does not get depolarized. So this is called electrically not. In infarction, the vector, the QRS vector will move away from the infarcted or the necrosed regions. So negative H2 delgo H cause for the same hypothesis we can apply for this. And in ST segment, ST segment is the, the most important part of ECG. It's an isoelectric period. When the myocardium is injured, it results in leakage of current. This is called current of injury. In severe ischemia and myocardial injury, the ST segment changes. So in myocardial injury, the ST segment, the ST vector is moved towards the injured surface. If the leads are oriented towards the injured surface, it results in ST elevation, the positive deflection. And leads oriented away from the current of injury, it results in negative deflection, reciprocal ST depression. Normally, the ventricles is active activated from endocardium to epicardium, transverse activation. So here the MI is not infarcted, it's only injured, it is not infarcted. In subendocardial infarction, which is the opposite to the mirror image to the transmural as epicardial infarction, here the current of injury direction is opposite from epicardial to endocardium. So T more blood is needed to repolarize than to depolarize. So whenever blood flow is decreased, T wave is affected. So ischemia decreased decrease blood flow, the primary abnormality, the T wave will move away from the ischemic region. And leads oriented towards this ischemic region will cause a negative reflection, T wave inversion. And intraventricular conduction difference, the QRS the complex duration is prolonged. So, so due to increased QRS, T vector move away from the QRS vector. So in ischemia, T vector move away from the ischemic region. The intra-antical condition defect, T vector move away from QRS sector. So this also will result in negative depression, but this is due to secondary phenomenon. So application, the normal QRS vector axis from minus 30 to 190, T wave axis between 0 and 90, left, normal left lower quadrant, and the normal QRS T angle does not exist 60 degree. So during ischemia, the T wave and the repolarization is affected more because more blood is needed. So T vector move away from the affected region, and QRS vector move away from the infarcted or the necrosis region. So just to compare two things, the fully evolved phase, the ST segment, the ST vector move towards the injured surface and T vector move away from the ischemic region and the Q vector move away from the infarcted necrosis region. And in the chronic surface phase, the elevated ST will return to the baseline and the inverted T wave again regains positivity and even the QRS complex may regain some of its previous positivity. So, uh, for, to understand most of the common cardiac diseases, the formation of ECG waves, we just we have to apply the cardiac diet theory. So, if you understand the cardiac diet theory, it's very easy to identify the formation of waves. An endo and cycloid triangle. So, you can see some two triangles. So, just uh, plotted. So, heart is situated in the center of the electric field, which generates the right arm, left arm, and left leg are the extensions of electric field. This was uh, initially proposed by endo one And the x-axis reference system, just you have to plot the net voltages or bipolar leads. Similarly, the net voltages you have to plot in the x-axis reference system. If you connect, so each will form equilateral triangles. So these equilateral triangles can be converted to a circle. So you can, you can see two circles, the two triangles. In the second figure, you can see only one circle. Because in previous states, you, the both the bipolar and unipolar, they have different resistance. If you correct, if you correct with the resistance, if you multiply each unipolar units with a correction factor, and then if you plot, I will get only one circle. So what it indicates, heart is at the center of the electrical field, and the right arm, left 
left arm and left leg or the extension of the ventricular field. And this was compared by endo one to a homogeneous volume spherical conductor. So you can see that the circle in three dimensions is a sphere. So how the heart at the center? So the heart in zero potential is at the original center of the XX reference system. When the heart acquires certain potential during depolarization and repolarization, the triangle gets shifted. But the equilateral triangle shape remains the same in any of the four quadrants. So using this amount, so each cardiac grid can be represented in the form of circles in the XX reference system. All that um, the circles in the orientation diameter should be formed only in the left lower quadrant, except QR, you can go up to minus 30 degree. So when the angle between the QR and the T increases, it can indicate strain of abnormal rate conduction on ischemia. So voltage will be higher if the size of the circle is, is, is larger. And ST is an isolated period, so no circle will be formed. So formation of circle and its magnitude during ST segment indicate the amount of myocardial injury. So vector principles, in the cardiac theory and the representation of resultant vector in the form of circle can be applied to diagnose most of the common cardiac diseases. So results are constructed these um, uh, cardiacs are using the MATLAB software. And the relationship between bipolar and unipolar limits are applied. Already shown in the previous existing formulas. And then for five conditions have shown. And four more gram figures have magnified and then focused for better appreciation. So in this figure, so you can this is the easy to only the limb leads have focused, the QR circle and the T circle. So QR circle, the non non QRST angle is normal here. In the second figure. T wave is so T wave is not in the normal quadrant. It is moving away. It is moving away from the inferior leads. So it denotes inferior on ischemic changes. So T lead three and ABF, the T wave is negative. And here the QR is in the SC segment. SC side to SC is an isolated period, so no circle will be formed. So here the SC segment is it's towards the inferior ball. So 2, 3 AVF is the inferior one. So uh, current uh, leakage of current, current of injury towards the inferior one. So inferior one injury. And then now, next to so intraventricular conduction defect, the QRS, the T vector is moving, QRS vector, the T vector is moving away from the QRS vector and because due to secondary changes. And this is the one more thing, left bundle branch block, the T vector is moving away from the QRS due to secondary changes. And just uh, compared to uh, two ECGs, T vector, this is the normal, normal T vector axis. And is the retrograde period axis, period axis. In the leads, you can see period is a negative in lead two. And compare that QRS vector here, the pathological Q wave, it is moving away from lead one and AVL. So it's moving the lateral wall is in the softer, old one. And here it is moving in here is left axis deviated more, more than minus 70. And SC vector here, I compare the inferior wall injury, and here. I compare the subendocardial injury. So, what is the significance of this? Is ECG one more thing? T wave vector, but here this is a normal quadrant. So, this is moving T vector move away from the ischemic region, away from the lateral region. So, lateral for ischemia. Here it is moving, this is not the normal quadrant, here it is moving away from the inferior one. It's so inferior one ischemic. So, what is the uh, use of these graphs? ECG. Plays a major role in the diagnosis of coronary disease, which is the number one killer disease of the world. And cardiac theory and endowment circular triangle form the basic foundation, the teaching of electrocardiogram. Cardiac theory helps H dot L equal H cos alpha. We can apply because ECG is very difficult to understand. It will take many months to understand. Even for even if I attend many workshops, also we will, on the same day we will, we will remember. After one week or one month, we will forget it. Only if it routinely we use, we will remember. But if you apply this H dot LGOS cause alpha cardiac theory and these formulas, it is much easier to identify, easier to understand and identify, especially most of the common cardiac diseases, especially for the junior staff and uh, junior staff. So this uh, cardiac theory helps to clearly analyze. So overcome the arduous stress of pattern of that. So this may serve as an efficient teaching method for ECG interpretation to be implemented in the medical and curriculum. So the combination of the early ECG with this resultant cardiac vector represented by cycle provides the optimum approach to ECG interpretation, resulting in saving countless lives of patients. These are the differences. Mm -hmm.